In this video, I'm going to show you how you can train your own model and import it into Diffusion V. So I made one based off of some of the prompts you may have seen on the Corridor Crew uh, video there, like God of War, some Matrix and Legos, and uh, yeah, the uh, Yoshi Shinkawa, and like some cyberpunk stuff. So I'm going to show you how to do this. Be sure to follow and like, and let's dive right into it. So you're gonna need a few things to get started. First things first, you're gonna need to download Diffusion B. Diffusion B is a standalone application. It's not a bot that you run on a Discord server or anything like that. So if you do check out Discord, please don't try to enter prompts because that's not how this thing works. So I will put all the links to everything in the description below, be sure to check it out. But what you're gonna wanna do is go to the GitHub address where you can download the app itself and they have the new releases under on the bottom right side here. So go under there and then it'll have whatever new latest releases and the notes that are associated with it. Uh, there's different models you can download. So you'll have to kind of figure out which one works best for you. I don't have a straight answer for you. You'll just have to kind of figure it out. But uh, yeah, so pick one that works for you. I think I have the, uh, the MPS version. There's one that runs faster than the other. I don't know, but anyway. So get that downloaded and install. You simply click and it's going to prompt to download it. I've already done this, so I'm going to cancel this out. So next, you're going to need a Google account. If you're not familiar how to sign up for Google, <laughs> you don't already have a Gmail account. Uh, simply go to Gmail or you know Google Gmail.com there and you'll sign up for a free uh, account there and you'll have a good amount of space. So I didn't have enough space because I use it quite often for a lot of stuff. So I ended up paying uh, to have more space in mine, but you should have enough by default to make a model. Um, yeah, so sign up for Gmail, get a Gmail account. Next, so you wanna make sure you have this tab open and ready to go. It's gonna also prompt you to sign in. So make sure you sign into this Dream Booth Stable Diffusion uh, page there. Again, you can sign in with your Gmail. You're gonna also need a Hugging Face account. I'm not gonna go through all the steps to sign up for one, but essentially just go to huggingface.co uh, and you sign up for free and you follow all the steps. There's plenty of videos about how to do that. But once you're all, you're all signed up and signed in, you go to settings and then access tokens and you can create a brand new token. So for this, I'm just gonna make one on the spot. I'm gonna call this uh, selfie, call it whatever you want to. Make sure you have the role set to right. That's essential. So you need to set to right and then generate token. So now it made a brand new token. I can copy this because we're going to need that later on. If you don't already have like Photoshop or something to edit photos, because you're going to need to probably fine tune yours, you can utilize a service like Photo P, which looks like this. Essentially, it's Photoshop, but for free and it's online and it's completely free again. So you can upload your photos, fix them up, make them look all nice and pretty. To resize your photos, the easiest way I found is to drag and drop it into this uh, site right here. It's a bulk image resizing uh, website. And I'll do some images so you can see the whole process. Another useful tool to fix up faces at the very end is going to be this uh, website. Uh, you can also use a uh, hugging face link that does similar stuff. Uh, but. This one's just easy for me. Just upload an image and it'll show you the before and after. It actually does really clean up your images. If you're struggling to come up with a fun prompt, you can always go to lexica.art and see other examples of what people have already created. So like, let's say I want to make this owl. You can copy this prompt that this person used, kind of follow and tinker around in Diffusion B to try to get something similar. And these are like other examples they had. This wasn't made in Diffusion B, but again, you'll generate something that looks similar. First things first, Again, sign up for a Google account, sign up for a Hugging Face account, download Diffusion B, install it. It's gonna load its base model of Stable Diffusion, uh, but we're gonna make our own custom one. So in the Dream Booth setup, uh, there's this free version, which will work enough to generate a model. But again, if you want, you can pay to have like a faster running uh, GPU and all this other stuff, if you pay for premium stuff. I did just because I made a few different models and I ran out of space, honestly, and it was just taking so long. So without this, it can take up to like two hours. Just keep that in mind, but it can also be very short depending on what you're making. So we're going to go down the line here and basically start installing these one by one. So you're going to click the first uh, cell here to run this. It's going to 
prompt, it's going to say, hey, you know, this notebook it was not authored by Google. We're just going to say run anyway and let it do its thing. So it's going to install the basics. If I open this little folder to the left and expand this out, you'll see what all gets installed. So it's installing all the basic stuff it's going to need. Install requirements. So it's going to create a folder in our uh, Google Drive. We haven't linked it just yet, but it's going to load all the basic models and stuff it needs uh, to train our Dream Booth model. So in our Hugging Face um, option here, this is where we needed our account to create a token. We'll get to that in a second once this is all loaded. I don't know if I'll do this in real time because it may take a little bit. All right, so that's all done and installed. Next, we're going to need our token from Hugging Face. So yours is going to be unique to you. So you're going to get your token and you're going to paste it in here and then you're going to hit play. So that's going to take a minute and it's already logged into the Hugging Face. It's linked back to that. So moving right along. So right here, I'm going to leave this, but uh, you're pretty much going to decide here where you want to save stuff. I have done this a few times. I literally had made this video once before and then messed up. But to make sure everything's saved correctly, I'm just going to save it in my G drive. And I want to have a unique folder name so I know what this is called. So I'm just going to call this Evan. So that's the folder it's going to create in my uh, Google Drive. Once I hit this little play button, it's going to prompt me say, hey, do you want to link it to Google? We're going to say yes. So I'll run the cell. You see this window pop up. So it says you have the permitted access to your Google Drive. Connect it to your Google Drive. Select the account. Scroll down to the bottom. Press allow. And it's going to create our folder that we labeled. And again, make sure you have this toggled because we want to save our file in our Google Drive. So now we have a folder in our Google Drive called, for, well, for my example, is Evan G. Selfie. So now if I go into my Google Drive, I have a folder called Evan Selfie. And this is where all of our weights and our model and everything is going to be saved. Moving right along as we scroll down, we can, this is where the training part kicks in. So, so there's a few different models that you can make. You can make something based off of a person. So that's going to fall under your, your category here. Like this is what we're going to change. It's going to be this, it's going to be this and this. So under instance prompt, this is what is going to be, it's going to tell our model to, Hey, focus on this specific thing. So I'm going to call this Evan G person. You can call it whatever you want to. I'm just going to keep it as photo of Evan G person. So that's going to tell my model to, Hey, activate basically. So again, under class prompt, that's what it falls into, like the category. So is it a dog? Is it a cat? Is it a car? Is it a person? So these are the categories we're going to have to make sure. So if I'm training this on me, a person, right? I'm going to make sure under this category or the class prompt here, I'm going to make sure this says person. And the only other part we have to change is class data directory. So again, this is going to be changed instead of the dog default to person. So again, you can train this on a style. So think of like a Van Gogh or Picasso or like uh, Basquiat or something. You know, they have specific styles, right? That's a look that they have to those things. So under that, you'd have this as style and you'd have this as style, right? If you were training a style of something, if you're training it on a, uh, you know, your pet dog or pet cat or squirrel or whatever the hell, whatever you got, you'd have that as that particular animal, right? And then the thing to make it focus, to add emphasis on that class is going to be your instance prompt here. Hopefully that makes sense. I'll, I'll try to repeat that one more time. So your instance prompt, this is telling it, hey, I want you to activate, right? This, this specific model under the class is what category it's under. Is it a car? Is it a person? Is it a dog, a cat, right? So these are the main three things we're going to have to change under this little tab here. So I'm taking my time here because I know a lot of you are going to probably ask the same questions. <laughs> so 
you can add more stuff here. I haven't fiddled with this just yet. If you do and you are much more experienced with this than I, please feel free to help out in the comment section and answer these questions and any other little tips and tricks you have because I'm still learning myself. So yeah, anyway, so we're all happy with this. Looks good. It's me, person, person, and person. Cool. Um, I'm gonna hit this little play button. So now that's gonna take a second to do. So scrolling down, here's where we're gonna upload all of our images. So I already have a bunch picked out. I've tried this before. Obviously I've made my little rough model, but I'm gonna remake this model with a few more images this time. So I wanna make sure I have these last ones properly sized, sight to resize images. So I'm gonna grab a couple more images of myself wearing different clothing and different kind of color backgrounds. And I'm gonna drag and drop that into here. And it already has an auto detect uh, image focal point thing, which is amazing. And basically just kind of helps you focus on the focal point of your image. And then once I'm happy with that, I'm just gonna say save as zip. So I'm gonna save it somewhere on my computer. Boom, took a second to do. I don't need this tab anymore so I can close this out. So I just extracted all the photos from the zip file. Now it's all correctly sized and cropped for me. So all I have to do is include those with my other set of photos to add uh, to my little data set there. So now I have about a hundred plus photos in this. You don't need that many, but I just wanted more variety because most of my hair was like bleached blonde. So I imported all my photos into this app called Photo Mill. It allows me to edit the metadata and rename all my photos in one fell swoop. So I'm gonna select all my photos. I'm gonna get rid of the metadata. And next I'm going to rename everything. So I'm gonna rename all my photos. Uh, and then hit start and it's gonna bulk rename all of my stuff. It's gonna say, are you sure you wanna rename it? I'm gonna agree to it. And boom, just like that, all my photos are now renamed. All my photos are ready, they're prepped, they're ready to go. So you're gonna wanna make sure you have a lot of dynamic facial expressions and poses and different wearing different color clothes. Like the more dynamic stuff you have, the better it's gonna be. Uh, but once that's all good, there's two ways you can do this. You can drag and drop. I've tried that and I keep having problems with that. So I haven't run into one by just using the upload um, uh, tab here. So I'm gonna stick with that. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? So choose my photos. So wherever you have your photos saved to, make sure you select all your photos, select open, and it's gonna take a little minute for it, it to upload. And you wanna keep in mind when you're using this uh, Dream Boost Stable Diffusion um, thing here, the web, the web app, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you're keeping this window kind of active when you start the training process. And again, it can vary on time if you're just training it on 10 photos or 100 photos. It's gonna, you know, 200 photos. It's gonna take a little longer, right? But you're gonna to wanna to make sure you're active on this little tab, otherwise it will time out and you'll have to start the whole process over. So that's kind of a pain in the butt. So just periodically uh, click around, just, you know, click on like the show code and kind of scroll around and you don't necessarily need to run anything else, just let it do its thing, but make sure that you're staying pretty active with this window. I wouldn't let it sit idly for too long. But this thing is gonna take a little minute for it to do, so I may pause this here and through the magic of editing, pop back in when it's all done. So on to the next window here. Uh, you can try out these numbers for yourself, but it's gonna be a lot of trial and error. I like having my batch size set to two. Uh, and my steps, I put about 3,500 and intervals, I'll have like maybe 500. And again, for the save sample prompt, we wanna have this the same as what we had at the top here. So whatever you had, whatever you had under your instance prompt, honestly, I'd probably have it the same thing. So basically have your steps higher than your interval here. Um, but the sample prompt, it can be the same as your instance prompt to generate intermediate samples uh, along with weights in the sample directory. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna save this as the same thing I had. So I had Evan G person. So just remember this because you're gonna need it to make your, your model actually function, right? So that looks good to me. And then we can hit the little run cell. So I'm double check my numbers. 500, yes, yeah, so every time it gets to 500 um, of its training, 
intervals, it's going to save a, a new weight in my library. If I have it set to a thousand, it's going to go every thousand. If I have it set to two thousand, it's going to go every two thousand steps. It's going to save a, a the weight. Every sorry, every interval is going to save two, um, a weight in my model in my uh, Gmail. So I have mine set to five hundred, so it's going to go to increments of five hundred. So I should have a total of like what, seven uh, weights saved in my library. But anyway, and then I have my class image set to 50 of this all everything else is default I'm leave that as is except for my batch numbers so I'm happy with this and then I can press play and this is the part that's gonna take a while so again you want to make sure that you're kind of active just kind of periodically clicking around I wouldn't wait more than like five minutes to do it it can like literally time out on you and you have to start over it's a pain because you'll have to like clear things out delete stuff out of your drive so it doesn't take up space and it's a whole thing um, you can purchase I, I'm not pro, you know I'm not uh, sponsored by anyone this is just me and my own nerdy passion about learning about stuff and figuring stuff out as I go I'm trying to save y'all time so you don't have to do such a learning curve <laughs> but you can purchase uh, through Google's thing here more RAM and we'll basically make this training go a little faster and they have a, a few options like a pay as you go and they have like a monthly thing I'm not gonna use it that often so I just did a pay as you go I think it was for like 10 bucks it gave me plenty to knock this stuff out pretty fast um, so yeah now it's gonna this is the whole long process so the fun thing about this is while it's doing this thing again every interval of mindset to 500 I can look in my drive and it's gonna make it's gonna show me the previews of what the images will look like roughly um, but as I keep scrolling down here while this is doing its thing, it's going to load up and then you'll see the numbers uh, begin. So it's, I'll let it keep doing this thing here. But I'll scroll down to so the next few windows and sales that will run. Um, I usually leave this blank again. Try at your own, you know, try your own stuff here. But just from my experience, I've made about uh, maybe close to eight models and they all seem pretty decent. The first ones were pretty rough because I didn't quite get didn't quite get it. There are a few uh, forums like on Reddit and uh, just YouTube <laughs> that kind of helped uh, break stuff down a little cleaner. And oops, uh, you can see here my numbers here. Um, oh my goodness, sorry. Let's scroll. There it goes. So I have mine set to three thousand five hundred, and it's showing me the percentage and how many steps it's taken so far. So you can see roughly how long it's going to take here to get this thing going anyway um, what was I saying yes there's different forums you can get information from but figure this out just trial and error um, I'm not gonna specify any weights it says it can leave a blank so that's what I do and I just hit play once this is all done and then uh, you would generate your weights so this is where your model is going to actually be created and after this cell is done um, you can uh, convert it to the file so this is where it makes it this CKPT I think I've been calling it something wrong the entire time so <laughs> my bad if I have but this converts it to the model that we can in implement into diffusion B and uh, that takes less than a couple minutes to do and it produces it in size then you'd run this inference uh, thing here uh, again, we're just we kind of go down the line and uh, This you can set to anything I can make it all sixes if I wanted to just yeah, it doesn't matter and then we can run that and Once that's all done. Yeah, so then you can uh, After it's done basically You'll run it uh, all cell by cell and then it will generate um, some stock images are the images the same preview images you'll see in your Google Drive will generate on a larger sheet so you can see like how it looks at uh, 200 samples at uh, 500 samples at you know whatever number you had set in increments that's what it will show you um, in a little chart and then you can test out your prompt so you can mine of course will be something different so mine's gonna be um, Evan G person and then I'll add that comma and then whatever prompt stuff I want here as a Cyclops sure <laughs> so like once my stuff is all ready and uh, trained then I can run the cell and it will generate 
uh, however many numbers of images I want. So I can turn this to eight. Then you can run the web UI version of this stable diffusion thing and basically do the same thing here. I feel like that's a little whatever, but yeah. And once you're happy with that, you can download your model and I'll show you how to do that in two different ways. There's being able to download it from the side here or straight out of your Google Drive. And I usually save it elsewhere on an external hard drive. So then I end up like deleting it out of here. Um, and it says you have this option to delete diffusers and old weights and only keep this, uh, the CKPT for free up to, to free up your drive. So basically I'll delete everything else but the last weight to kind of save space. So also this is what I mean when I'm saying clicking around. So me just clicking and filling in sales periodically like low quality. Uh, I misspelled that terribly, okay. <laughs> but I would uh, just kind of do that coming back and forth, opening these little tabs here, like the show code little tabs, scrolling around, collapsing sales, just to stay active so this thing doesn't close down. Um, but I can see that it already has surpassed one uh, thing here, like one of my, okay, we'll see it in real time right now. So I set my increments in 500, right? So I should have two folders now of previews in my Gmail. And this is what it will do. It's going to stop for a second when it reaches whatever you, uh, threshold kind of thing you set it to. It's going to create the sample files. These are the things that are going to be saved in your Gmail. And I'll wait for it to start before I hop on over to Gmail. So going into my Gmail account, if I go under the folder that I created, you can see there's nothing going to be in the first little zero in here, but at the 500 mark and then under samples, you'll see the sample images. The first ones are going to look really bad. <laughs> oh my God. But they don't look like what you want it to, whether you're making a style or a person, it's just, it's not going to look good the first couple ones. So don't worry. It looks better as time goes on. So as my samples continue, this is at a thousand. It already looks a lot more like me. It's still not quite right, but it's getting there. So now because I also incorporated a different uh, color clothing and hairstyles, I now have the bald kind of look and the arms look a little weird there, whatever. But it's getting closer to how I look. But again, don't worry if yours look like really, really crappy because it's this is the early stage of the training process. So as the time goes on and it gets closer to like the 2,500 mark, it's gonna look a lot more like what you want it to look like. Again, for my example, I'm making it as a person, as me. Uh, if you're training it on one of your pets, it's gonna look like the same thing. It's gonna look really wonky until it gets kind of closer to the end there of the steps. So that's why you kind of have to play around with the steps. When I was first doing this, I didn't, I mean, I don't fully know what I'm doing just yet either, but when I first started, I had my step count way too high. I had it like at 10,000 steps or something and it was ridiculous. And I wasn't even training that many images, but I was trying to train it on a style and I was mixing up Okay, what's the difference? Because going through these different forms, you can change it from person to man to woman to cat to dog, whatever. And it didn't quite click for me until I started experimenting. I'm like, okay, now it makes sense. So yeah, you just kind of have to like trial and error and learn as you go kind of thing. Uh, so this is almost done at the next threshold mark here. So when it gets to 500, I'll have another folder where I can check out in my uh, Google Drive to see the progress. So it's almost done. And again, it's going to pause. It's going to do whatever stuff it's doing. It's going to generate those preview images. And again, all the preview images I can see up in my Google Drive are going to be on that one sheet at the very end. I like usually screenshotting mine uh, when it's on the sheet. And then I'll save that along with my, my, um, my model. So for future reference, if I want to go back, I can remember, okay, this is the name of the model. This is what it looks like generally. And uh, those are the kind of images you see. Like normally if you go on um, Civit AI, you'll see different images that people create. And some of them are from like the little model sheets like that. So now I'll hop back into my Gmail. And now I can see this. Now I have the third folder here, right? So now under this sample, the images are getting a little bit more closer to how I look. So now I also have the different hairstyle. Hair colors changed now to the redhead. Uh, still got the blonde and mohawk, a lot of laying down selfie shots. 
<laughs> okay, again, I hate taking photos so much. You don't understand, but uh, please, I hope you appreciate my embarrassment and you give this video a like and a follow, because <laughs> this is a, uh, it's very cringy for me. I hate this. I like behind the scenes stuff. I don't like being in front of camera. Anyway, so this is at 49%. Again, yours might take a little longer depending on how many photos you're, photos you're using. And if you're using like the free default thing that comes with this uh, Dream Booth, or if you're paying Google to have more RAM and uh, whatever stuff. So again, I, I paid I, the first ones I didn't, but after like three models, I was ready maxing out and stuff. So I paid to have this thing done sooner because I didn't feel like waiting around like two hours for this thing to generate. So this is doing it in like 40 minutes, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Uh, and again, it wasn't super expensive at the time. It may change as time goes on, but it was like maybe 10 bucks. Anyway, so while that thing's doing its uh, thing here, I'm gonna pop back over. I'm gonna pop back over into Diff Diffusion B here and then play around with this while this is loading. I was trying to make a Yoda in the Mandalorian armor. So, uh, to kind of fine tune this, I might go into the uh, Lexica. So I'm gonna copy Mandalorian, because I'm pretty sure someone else has made a Mandalorian thing, right? So going into Lexica, I'm not gonna stay too far out of my uh, Dream Booth thing, because I don't want it to stop on me. But I wanna see if there's any examples here I can use. So just put in the name there, find one that I like. So I think this one looks cool. Uh, of course, that would be in Spanish, <laughs> which is fine. Uh, but I'm gonna copy this prompt. And let's go back into Diffusion B. So in Diffusion B, I'm gonna paste that prompt that that person had there. And keep the rest of it, and I'll press Generate. While that's doing its thing, I'm gonna hop back over into Dream Booth. Okay, so it should have generated another set of images in my um, folder here. So now I have this fourth folder at 2000 under my samples. Let's see. Okay. So <laughs> that's interesting because I never had a hairstyle like this one. Um, but yeah, yeah, my faces are looking a little crazy still, not quite just right. But now it's, it's showing me demos of like it at different angles, different perspectives. Uh, I don't know why my hair is all slicked and stuff, but it's getting closer. This actually looks kind of close to me, but not quite. <laughs> all right, so let's back out of here. And by the time this one's done, oh, look at that. It already finished the other one. So this is samples. It's still generating the other samples. Okay, got different lighting examples now. Good, good, getting a little better there. So it should have two more folders it's gonna make. One when it gets to 3000 and then one when it's at 3500. And another fun part about this is, say you have you know, your, your own drawings that you've created. You wanna train a model on your style? You can do that now. So you can import, you wanna have a good amount of images, but you can import your images same way we just did with like my portrait. Uh, and selfies and stuff, and you can train a model on that. And then you can generate images in your own style uh, and have that available either for your own personal use or you can have it available publicly for people to use. I'm still debating if I wanna make my other ones public just yet, cause I'm still fine tuning them and they don't look perfect. And I'm like, I'm kind of a perfectionist when it comes to like little weird things like that. But anyway, hop back over to B. So already I like the results better. Uh, that doesn't look like Mandalorian armor, but I do like the little hat, little thing at Colin Yoda. But anyway, so now it's generated the one at 3,000 samples, and it's making the uh, samples, which again, you'll see on the bottom once this is all done, and also they'll be in the Google folder itself. So I generated one, two, three, and four. So now it's on the last little leg here. Of it's uh, creating it. it has about two minutes left before this thing's all done so these are the ones at 3,000 samples with my images so so far like the before and after quite quite an improvement like I would say a, a big improvement at the very beginning at 500 samples like yeah you know 
doesn't at all look like me. Looks a lot closer to how I look and yeah, and it's got more variety with lighting situations. And stuff. So we're at 92%, just about done here. Again, yours will probably take a little longer. All right, so while that's doing this thing, uh, it looks like it generated the last samples here. It's already done. So now our model is created and just about ready to go. So all the weights are all made. So done with that. So now we can say specify the weights directory to use. I'm going to leave this blank and just hit play. And then we're going to generate a grid view images from the last saved weights. So all the ones that I saw in the Google Drive, it's going to put on the sheet, which makes it a little easier to kind of see the before and after. Oh yeah, there we go. So now all of the, the images from the before and after. So again, it shows you the steps, four images, a uh, thousand steps, a uh, thousand five hundred steps, two thousand, getting more like the likeness is getting there, two thousand five hundred likeness is there. Honestly, three thousand doesn't look bad, uh, but the three thousand five hundred, I would say looks a little closer and I like the lighting variety here. Uh, so looks good to me. So next thing, we're just going to click on this cell and it's going to convert this into the CKPT file, which we then can use in Diffusion V. So it shouldn't take too long. And again, there's two different ways we can download this thing. Okay. So now that's all completed there. And we're going to go with the, uh, click the little inference thing here. All right. And this is our seed number. Uh, again, you can change it to whatever you want. Um, let's see. Doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, let's see here. And then hit play. And then here's where we can make our fun little stuff here. So it has me skydiving. Uh, that looks pretty fun. I'd have to like fiddle with all this in Photoshop, but you get, you get the gist of it. It made, <laughs> it made me skydiving. So there you go. I have a custom, oh, the top was looking super buff. That's awesome. It has the right hairstyle. I, I gotta hit the gym, I guess, man. Jeez. So you can download the model two different ways. So under your folders here, under my drive, and then I have, I have a folder under stable diffusion weights and then the Evans selfie folder that I, folder that I made. It'll be under the last, the highest weighted one. That's where the your model's gonna be. So here's the, so now here's the, uh, the uh, CKPT file. I can either click on the little three dots here and download it this way, or back in my Google Drive, I can click on the folder and same thing, click on the three dots and then download it here. It's gonna say, hey, this folder's too big for it to scan, it's fine. Um, but yeah, now it's the proper model that I need. It's about two gigs in size and we can import this into Diffusion V and start making some fun art and find wherever the model is you have saved. So I have it under a whole bunch of folders, but the 2.0 and press open. So now Diffusion B will be able to read our custom model and just like you saw in Corridor Crew when they had those images using their own image creating these really cool styles, we can do the same thing. But I'm gonna go, and now at the very bottom here, I have the Evan G Selfie 2. So now if I run that prompt that we got with the Saitama, full body portrait, blah, 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 same thing. And it should generate something interesting. And again, from here, we can fiddle with our settings. I'm hoping in the update you can kind of see more numbers because this guidance scale, it doesn't tell me much right now. I'm going to keep it low <clears throat> and then I'll try one when it's kind of high. Steps I'm just going to leave at 25 and I'm going to leave the numbers at 5 by default. But everything else is set to go. I can change my seed number to the all sixes if I want to, but it's not really going to make too much of a difference here. Uh, let's just generate. So just like anything else, it's gonna do its thing and it'll take a little minute for it to generate or to load the model. And once it starts generating, it's only, it's gonna be like less than a minute for each image. Um, but that also depends on how much detail you want. So if I have my numbers set instead of 25, I have it set to like 
40 or 50 or something, it's gonna take a little longer to generate the image because it's just running, uh, the, the quality is gonna be higher potentially, but it's gonna take a little longer to make. While this is going, be sure to like and subscribe because this is a lot of work to make this video. I hope you all appreciate this, how much time is involved. <laughs> and this answers a bunch of questions I get asked over and over. How do I make my own model? I just showed you, so here we are. All right, so now I have me, not quite Saitama, so I got the interesting outfit and an interesting look. So, but you can see it's it looks like me, right? It's trying, it's a model trained on me. So now it's generating images. Uh, while that's going though, I want to do the one that you see all the time on the corridor crew when they made their own custom one. I'm gonna do the uh, uh, that's what it was, the big boss by Yoji Shinkawa. <laughs> I want to see that one's gonna look with this new model. So this is the old model of me. I just had more blonde hair. And uh, the new one has a little bit more hairstyle variety. So let's see. I did take some uh, some some gym photos. <laughs> I wasn't this big and bulky though, but uh, I, I appreciate the uh, the love that uh, Diffusion B showing me here. <laughs> All right, we're getting some interest in the uh, yellow shirt. Quite, I don't know. It's not quite Saitama, but it's it's. Saitama esque. <laughs> Not quite. Shirt. So, hopefully, that will keep it from adding floral anything and multicolor stuff out of this. <coughs> oh my god. Alright, that was a little cell shaded. Looks like kind of a GTA kind of thing. I'm gonna stop this one here. And we're just gonna run that last one and call this a day with this and then we'll export one of these out. While that last one's loading, I'm hopping back over into Tencent.com and seeing if it will fix the crazy cricket eyes. <laughs> I don't think it's going to, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be optimistic. Oh no. Let's see. Uh, okay. Slow reveal. Uh, oh no, it didn't quite fix the eyes. Clean up the skin and the lips and it changed the nose. So it like changed the entire face. Gave the eyes more detail. Got rid of the bags under the eyes. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, but shoot, the eyes are still crooked. <laughs> so at this point, you probably have to like take it into Photoshop or Photo P. I'm gonna open Photo P and then try to salvage that photo. So it, it cleaned it up. It um, resized it a little bit, but the eyes still look a little wonky. So on photo P, I'm gonna see if I can like, use like the liquify tool like you would in Photoshop. So same kind of shortcuts. I mean, that's closer. <laughs> oh God. All right, so here's the final thing from Diffusion B with our model trained on my face with the selfie. And using the prompt that you saw, like a corridor crew, a photo of, and again, I have it as me, a person, a digital painting of Big Boss from Metal Gear Solid, Yoji Shinkawa. So these look pretty damn nice. I really, really like the style of this looking thing here, but I think this is probably my favorite so far. It's got the really fun art style. Um, oh, they just keep getting better. <laughs> Well, anyway, <clears throat> while this thing's loading, I think I'm gonna call it a wrap here, but that is how you make your own custom model that is usable in Diffusion B, whether you're making it off a person, whether you're making it off a style, uh, you can do all these things, whether it's an object, if you have like your favorite, I don't know, uh, stuffed animal or something, you can take a bunch of pictures of it in different angles, different lightings, different backgrounds, and train it as a model, and then you can have that and whatever kind of environment you want. So anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Again, I ask you kindly, please like and subscribe and leave a comment below on what you'd like to see next. Hopefully you enjoyed this. This is the Proto Art. I'm Evan and I hope I helped some of y'all out there. All right, y'all, talk to you later. Peace.